YouTube and everybody. Captain Dave Sport Fishing sitting here in the wolf den where all the good stuff always takes place in this hot room. For some reason, it's always hot in here. But, uh, let's see, the reason I'm even doing this, and I've done this, I've sort of attempted the thought of doing this video uh, several times. Several, several times. I tried, I was going to do it in the boat one day, and then when I was going to do it, sitting in the garage, my lazy boy in the garage. But now I'm just kicked back in the old office chair. And I guess I left everybody who watched it kind of hanging. I did a video of when I was walking in my neighborhood in the afternoon with the traffic whizzing by. And basically in that video, I discussed all about this hum humongous kidney stone that I ended up having. It was like 11 millimeters, they said. And, you know, I spent three days in the hospital and they didn't want me to go home because they said, you know, if this thing ended up blocking your entire tube coming out of your kidney, you'd be in a real, a real spot. And I mentioned that video. Well, all that went through, you know, I got all that done. They went up uh, through old Mr. Happy all the way up to my kidney and they shot it with a laser beam or something and pulled out as much as they could and ended up putting this stent, stent, S-T-E-N-T, stent, all the way up in there. And then I had that thing for uh, seven, eight, nine days, something, seven days or something. And that was to keep everything wide open so it would, anything else, the kidney stone would flush out. And the funny thing is, the it's always this way. And that's going to be leading me to my second part of this, this discussion. Is the cure sometimes is worse than the cause. And I don't fare well with stuff going through my bladder. Like, uh, what do they call those things? Um, tubes that they shove up you so you can pee. What do they call that? I, I can't even. I can't even remember what they call them. But I had to have that stent taken out ASAP because the day after they put it in, I ended up back in the hospital with such bladder spasms. I might have mentioned this. The bladder spasms is when your bladder just is sitting there because it's a muscle. And it just contracts real hard. And I'm telling you, it's one of these kind of pains that will drop you to your knees. At least it does for me. Um, I've had it before when I had my prostate augered out and they stuck one in. And I was supposed to be all great then. And I literally walked, walked out of the VA hospital in Gainesville made it to my truck for a two-hour ride home and I had to turn around back then and go back into the hospital readmit myself because the pain was so bad and it's funny how they do the surgeries but it's the, it's the after is the bad part so keep that in mind after is the bad part always it seems like not beforehand the after so, to bring everybody up to speed, because I said I was going to kind of keep people in the loop or keep my YouTube viewers in the loop, the problem here is, is the fact that I haven't, and a lot of time has passed by. I can't even remember when I did that video. Back in March, April, March, April sometime I did that last video, walking down the street, telling you all the good stuff and how I was diagnosed with prostate cancer, 
basically you hit your like 60th birthday. Boom! Prostate cancer basically happened the same thing to my dad. So I've had all these, uh, I had three biopsies, I think three or four biopsies. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave out the dirty details, but that's no fun either. That's no walk in the park. It doesn't hurt or anything. It's just not good. Because, you know, down here in your urinary area, you only have two orifices for doctors to go up in. Okay? You only have two. And so they use both orifices. <laughs> well, the biopsies in the backdoor orifice. Hold on to that thought. Backdoor orifice. So all of this has come around now and it takes forever. And what I did is seeing I've had the prostate cancer, just like my dad at the same age. The thing about it is, is because of it being a hereditary thing, my urologist at the VA is such a great guy. Dr. Whitaker. This guy is a great, great doctor. He's a good guy. And he's, God, how many years is he? He worked at a, at a urology clinic, he said, for something like 30 plus or 35 years. And now he's, an, he's even older and he's now working at the VA. And we're always talking. So he got me right away on every six month PSA tests. That's nothing but a piss test or a blood test or something. And it finds, if you don't know any of this, and if you're creeping up in the age category, and if you have it in your family, and there's a certain person out there that I'm talking to, he knows who he is. I've been talking to him a lot about this. If you have it in your family, you better at, say, 40, 45, you better start getting checked. Because you won't make it very long if you end up just letting it go. So I had these PSA tests for the last six, seven years, every six months. Well, I had my prostate augured out. That's why I was at the VA hospital in Gainesville having that procedure done. And prior to that, what the issue was is incontinence because you get this inflamed, enlarged prostate. I'm not going to go through what a prostate does. You can kind of look that up on yourself because it's a gland. It's not an organ. It's a gland. And the thing about it is it sits directly underneath your bladder on the way to Mr. Happy. Okay. And I had that where they went up Mr. Happy and they augered it out. Basically, they go in and they cut out flesh in there so you can pee better. I mean, years ago, I'd be on a boat with customers. And it would be, I'd be pulling anchor. I'd be netting a fish. And I'm telling you, when I had to go, it wasn't wait around. I had 10 seconds. I remember walking down the street, doing a walk. I do two miles going down to the first church. I'm outside down the road from my house. And I turn around and I walk back. I'd have to plan that trip. I'd have to know what bush I could hide behind and take a leak. I'd be on the boat with customers. I'd be pulling anchor, dipping a fish out of the water, whatever, and go drop everything. Boom, right to the bow and sit my Maxwell House container up there and have to take a leak. It was really, really bad. And that's the reason why I ended up doing this TERP procedure. At the same time, back then, 
to be up four or five times in one night. I mean, you're never getting what they call, what is it, REM sleep? You're never getting it. So I was dragging ass all the time. I, I knew it. I felt it. Year after year, it went on for years, and they had me on medication. But the medication plateaus. It goes up, 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 and it works, works, works a little bit, a little bit, a little bit better. And then all of a sudden, it doesn't get any better, and you just flatline where the medication you're taking ain't doing nothing for you. And I told that to this Dr. Whitaker at the VA. I said, doesn't that plateau? And he's like, yeah. And at that point, he said, well, it's time for the terp, where they went in and augured me out. Now, I've been very good since then. Everything's been great. And then, I, of course, about February, I get, I guess it's February or March, I get diagnosed with the prostate cancer. And we're finding it really, really early. I even talked to Dr. Whitaker today on the phone. We're finding this very, very early. Good. I've had to go for a bone scan of my entire body to see if there's any cancer in your bones. They got a procedure they have to do. Okay. Well, my cousin was younger than I am, and his dad had prostate cancer. And what did he have? He ended up having prostate cancer also. And they obviously found it nice and early because he was still rather young. And he opted for the robotic surgery where they make some small incisions and then they go right next to your belly button and they go in with these little tools and all this stuff. And the surgeons, usually it's all, sometimes it's like two are sitting at literally like a gaming console with like they're looking at a periscope, you know, and the, <laughs> they're seeing cameras on the ends of these little tiny, tiny tools that they stick in these little slits that they put in your, your abdomen here. And they go in and they do all this. They cut out your prostate. Now I've seen it on YouTube when they were doing the pathology of the prostate after it was removed. And I mean, this is a gland. It's this big around. And it's got a tube going through it and everything. And then they pull it out of that little hole. And then they sew you back up. Well, my cousin had that. And basically, you're not supposed to do a damn thing for six weeks. You're not supposed to lift, run, jog. You're not supposed to do anything. Because what they have to do is if your bladder's here and your prostate is right below it and your tube that you urinate through comes out of the bottom of your bladder and it goes right through your prostate. It goes right through it on the way to Mr. Happy, right? And they have to cut that out and then reconnect it all. And as one of the doctors told me, if you're out there doing something super strenuous and moving around a lot, and for some reason, if that tears where they connected it all back together, they tie it or they stitch it back together or something. If that tears and something happens, your urine now is going out of your bladder and straight into your gut cavity. And he said, that ain't good. So he says, I can't stress enough to not do anything strenuous. And then I'm sitting here, I'm watching YouTube. I am worried. I am, I'm on the edge of my seat. I don't know what to do. My dad had radiation and he's, he seemed to be fine after it. He went to work every day. And now my cousin, see my cousin's an insurance guy. He goes and sits in an office or whatever. He's not picking up 60 pound ice baskets. He's not pulling anchor out of 50 feet in the, in the St. John's River. He's not climbing in and out of the boat off of a ladder in the bow. He's not cranking the boat up. He's not lifting the, the trailer off the, off the ball of the truck hitch. You know, he's not climbing in and out of boats. Well, that's what I do. And that would be considered extremely strenuous to do that 
within that six weeks. And then they, like the guys on YouTube, they can't guarantee you that you won't have incontinence again. Well, incontinence again for me, because that's the side effect where you can't hold it. Believe it or not, when you have the robotic surgery for your having your prostate ectomy, having it removed, the deal is they don't even let you out of the hospital until you actually pass gas. I mean, it sounds really funny. I mean, it's like uh, Larry the Cable Guy jokes here. Toilet humor. I mean, everything about this is like toilet humor to me. But, I mean, they won't let you out of the hospital until you do. Because when they're in there rooting around in your gut, your system, without you even knowing it, supposedly kind of shuts down. And that means, you know, taking a crap or everything. It all kind of shuts down. So you got to sit around waiting for all this to kind of come back. Oh, that's it, a catheter. And then for like a week to 10 days, again, like I had after having this augering of the prostate, and I had that like three years ago, and it was a game life changer for me. Okay, no more of this, you know, not being able to hold it and having piss running down the inside of your leg, you know, in the middle of pulling anchor. Okay, so... Uh, my cousin had this and he sat, you know, in an office. He's an insurance dude. You know what they are. They all. And the whole idea was, is he got to kind of kick back. And these guys on YouTube are all wearing Depends undergarments afterwards. And some of them ain't doing so good. And it's a year later and they're still wearing Depends undergarments. Because they claim that when you get that prostate taken out, your bladder's not really working, and you literally have to do these things called Kegel exercises. Are you kidding me? You gotta sit there and pretend like you're in the middle of a pee stream. And you need to do it like five times a day or whenever you're just sitting, not even you're not thinking about it, you just need to do it. You gotta pretend like you're in the middle of taking a pee. And you got to clench. And you got to practice cutting it off. It doesn't have to come with the face movements. It doesn't have to come with that. You could just sit there and be watching uh, watching TV, you know, with your kids or something. They don't even know you're doing it. And you got to pretend like you're cutting it off. Because you got to build those muscles up that are down in there, okay? And a lot of people get the prostate taken out, radically just taken out, because you've got lymph nodes and nerves all around it. And it also affects your sex life. I could not care about that. Kids, wives, all that, that ain't part of my life. My, what's part of my life is standing on a boat with customers. That's all all I care about. So the incontinence part is the part that bothers me. These other guys on YouTube, they're talking about, yeah, well, you know, I take a Viagra and I'm kind of back in the game again. Psh, really? You know, that's like the least important thing in, in the world to me right now. I just don't like piss running down my leg, you know. I used to be in Walmart before I had the TERP procedure and I would do my go into the produce department or something and then wheel over to the bathroom in, in the front of Walmart, take a leak. I'd go over to the hardware department, swing through the through the sporting sporting goods, you know, and then whatever. And I'd be close to the back bathroom of the Walmart. I mean, that's how I had to plan my life back then. And then I got the TERP procedure and everything was better. But the other day I met with a great guy, Dr. 
Simmons or Simons. And he is a, I got his card right here, a radiation oncologist. <clears throat> because I already met with the surgeon. And he told me the, the straight scoop. He said, this is the way it's going to be after we take your prostate out. And then he kind of had a little, a little pause when I told him I had that TERP procedure, which throws a little bit of extra concern into putting your piping back together, I guess. I, I, know, I know what he's talking about, and he went, eh, you know, it's eh, just a little degree of more difficulty, maybe, maybe. It's not like these surgeons haven't seen this stuff before. Man, these guys, they do this like me tying fish hooks, okay? Like me taking a croaker off of that swallowed a hook off the line. That's how these guys are. They're laser focused. Boom, 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 boom. They get it done, and then you're out the door because that's the way it works today. So I go to see this Dr. Simmons. I've got a card right here on my cork board. And he explains the whole radiation therapy to me. And I'm thinking about going that direction because I could still do a weekday charter. I would have to have radiation beaming down here into a certain spot. I mean, he says it's, it's pretty heavy duty and it's so pinpointed now. See, back in my dad's day, when he had radiation, it wasn't as pinpoint as it is now. And I would have to go to a place that's 25 minutes from my house every single day, Monday through Friday, for six solid weeks to have this done. But if, let's say if I have a Wednesday charter or a Friday charter or whatever it happens to be, I could leave... I don't know exactly right now, but I would probably be able to be there 11, maybe 11.30. I'd be able to, to drive away, which in the summer, it's no big deal. It's, it's light till 8, 9 o'clock, right? So, I mean, it's no big deal. We still get our six hours in. Most people in the summer heat, they don't last six hours to start off with. The only problem is the weather, but I'm just, I, there's nothing else I can do. But here's the thing about the radiation. It doesn't really, there is no incontinence. It's not, it's not this, you're not, you're going to be wearing Depends undergarments for a year afterwards. Even Dr. Whitaker, when I talked to him today, he said there is a radical difference between having it, your prostate removed and having the radiation. But, it's not all lovely every day when I choose a time and I'd be choosing as early as possible. I got to get up. It's like going to work, which I, you know, I don't have, I haven't had a regular job in 26, 27 years. I have not had a regular job where I get up in the morning and do this monotonous thing. Okay. Every Every day, every day when I go on a charter or whatever, it's always something I kind of look forward to and I look at it as there's a challenge ahead of me. Be it the people, the weather, the seas, the tide, the, the kids on the boat, the, the grandpa in a walker with a walk. I mean, I got challenges. That's what I look at when I leave my house to go on a charter. I'm not thinking about what fish we're going to catch, how many fish we're going to catch, where we're going to catch them. I'm just thinking about the overall challenge that's ahead of me for the day. So this monotonous six for six weeks, Monday through Friday, getting in the truck, driving 25 minutes, going in there. Here's the bad part. You got to go. You go to the radiation place. You get in there, drop drop your drawers, put on a, I don't know what they do to you, and they stick a balloon up your ass. Remember I told you about the other orifices? And the reason being is it's a tube, 
and then they take a syringe and push air into it to blow it up in your butt to help move your bladder or something out of the way a little bit so they can get to the prostate easier with this radiation beam. And then they pull that out, throw that away, <laughs> obviously. You give a, a good wipe and you pull your pants up and you're out of there in, you know, 30 minutes or something is what they say. 25 minutes home, already have the boat loaded, hitch it up to the truck, get to the bait shop, get to the boat ramp. That would be life for six weeks during this summer. <clears throat> when that's going to start, we don't know. Because here's the other little caveat to the story. Is in the very beginning, before you can even start radiation, they're going to give you this home hormone shots. And they're physically sticking a needle in your ass and injecting female hormones into you. And as Dr. Whitaker said, don't worry, there's really no side effects. You're not going to grow boobs. <laughs> that's, that's, what, that's what Dr. Whitaker told me. Don't worry, you ain't growing boobs from it. It's such a slight amount. And the reason being is they're trying to shrink the prostate. Because women don't have prostates. So obviously if you put a little estrogen into your system, it will shrink it down and make it easier for them to handle, I guess. I don't know. But it's just a shot before the radiation starts and like a shot after the radiation is over. So my voice might get a little higher. <laughs> no, I don't think so. My dad told me he did it. They gave him the hormone shots. And he says, here's what you get. Every once in a while or during the day, you get hot flashes as if you're like a woman going through menopause. And it's not like, oh, you know, it's because it's hot outside. As my dad put it, it's from inside out. You get these surges of heat and he says it lasts just a couple minutes. But it bothered him enough that when my dad was at work sitting at his desk, doing his computing and programming and all that stuff that he used to do in an air-conditioned building, he bought a fan and put it on his desk to blow air on him to make him feel a little cooler. Dr. Whitaker told me, he says, yeah, just speed up the boat, get that wind in your face. By the time you slow down, it'll be all over. That's what he told me. I mean, Dr. Whitaker is so cool. And he's, he's, a, he's I can't even guess his age. He's a pure white-haired old guy. And that's the kind of doctors you really want. You want these older guys that have tons and tons of experience. And I'm happy I do. Now, the radio, radi radiation oncologist, Dr. Simons here, Simmons, I'm going to ask him how you pronounce that. <laughs> he's, I don't know, he, I don't even think he's 50 yet. So, but here's the funny thing. I told him I do fishing charters, and he said, my parents are fishing machines. They love to go fishing. So what did he do? When I called him the other day to get some little dirty details about how to get this all rolling, because I'm kind of antsy to get this six weeks under my belt and get back to regular life. Uh, he booked a charter. I'm going out on the 13th with him and his parents. Ain't that something? I guess I'll be able to find out really some more dirty details. But, you know, that's the thing. It's kind of like an old Curb Your Enthusiasm, Larry David. You know, doctors on their off time, they don't want to sit around and talk about medical things. It's kind of like me. You know, I don't want to be in Walmart and have somebody go, Hey, you do charters? What's biting? You're catching any flounders? Or in a gas station. I get it all the time. As of October 1. Hey. How's the sheep's head biting? Why is it always the 1st of October I start getting those, those questions? It's 99 degrees in October. In the first couple weeks of October. 
It's hot as holy hell. It's not like the water temperature dropped at all. Not anymore. It, that's a getting into November type thing now. So I don't like that either when people want to sit there and chew your ear off about, you know, me and my brother went out and caught some big red bass at the end of the jetties back in 1962. Are they still biting? You know, and all I'm trying to do is put freaking gas in my boat or my truck or something like that. So I'm not going to bother Dr. Simmons with all the medical stuff. But it's cool that I'm actually being, I'm taking out the doctor that's in charge of my radiation. So that is the big decision. My dad said that's possibly one of the larger decisions you'll ever make in your entire life. Surgery or, ra or get radiated. Neither one is going to be fun. This is not going to be fun. Um, I said, what is the side effects of getting radiated five days out of seven to Dr. Simmons? And he said, well... Probably at the end of the day, whatever you're doing, probably at the end of the day, as you get going through this, you're going to be a lot more tired at the end of the day than you are right now. And I said, yeah, but now if I'm not fishing, you know, I eat lunch and I take a nap and my lazy boy and then get up and start doing stuff like videos and whatever, you know. So he said, well, you'll be a little more tired. He says, you'll, you'll feel a slight fatigue as you go along. Now, if there's anybody out there that's had all this, go ahead and comment in the comments below. I mean, my dad went to work every day. I mean, it was 25 years ago when he had it done. So he doesn't remember every single detail. He forgot to tell me about the hot flashes. And the doctor didn't tell me about it either. One of them... One of those, leave out some dirty details there, you know. So that is the big decision. It's going to screw up my entire summer in one way or another. You know, so you got the economy. I'm doing half, basically half the business that I was doing three years ago at this exact moment. Half Whatever your income was three years ago, basically for me right now, cut it in half. There's customers I haven't even seen that I used to take out all the time. I don't know what happened to them. You know, I don't feel like I should bug them. I'm not one of those kind of guys. Like you see, I don't beg for thumbs ups. I don't beg for subscribers. Because if you're watching YouTube, you know what to do. You know that we count on these. And the reason being is YouTube's Chinese social credit score does not give two shits about your video unless there's an absolute buttload of these things. You know, it all started with Facebook. Zuckerbook, as I call it. And Instaface and all that crap. You know that, look at me now. Oh, I love how you look. Uh, you're eating scrambled eggs for breakfast? Uh, oh boy, you got a hamburger for lunch? Uh, you know, it's all just ridiculous. So I'm not going to sit, I don't sit and beg people. I'm maybe a little too ornery for begging people. And maybe there's a long-term effect of that. And there is, because I don't get no views and no thumbs ups on any knife video. None. I mean, compared to other absolute adolescent dweebs that I watch doing knife reviews, they are doing it when they get a free knife. I don't get free nothing. And these guys are, I watch them, oh, they piss me off so bad. Oh, I switch back over to fishing. Because <laughs> I can't stand these some of these guys that sit there and just talk talk, talk about a knife. I don't want to just talk about a knife. I want to sharpen a knife. I want to talk about the steel, the edge, who owns it, you know, kind of that, that was my game plan on doing knives. 
you know, trying to break into another topic, off, an offshoot of fishing. But this is a real offshoot of fishing. This is a thing that's definitely going to affect me big time this summer. And I was thinking how many ways I could do this video and tell everybody about one of the bigger decisions I'll ever make. They always say buying a house is the biggest decision you'll ever make. Yeah, but a house doesn't kill you. House doesn't cause, cause you physical pain and discomfort. But surgeries and things like that will. And I guess he said to me, radiation has an 85% cure rate. I hope I'm on the 85% side. I'd love to know if there's anybody else out there who's been through this and has made that decision to do the radiation so you can go to work every day and live sort of a normal life versus, you know, sitting around. It's time. I'm either going to put the time in to drive back and forth to the radiologist place or it's time sitting on my ass not making any money because I could at least go out and take, do some kids trips and stuff, you know, two hours, really a kid, two hours, kids trip turns into a four hour day for me minimum because I got to get to the boat ramp. I go to the bait shop afterwards. I got to still run the boat out, clean the boat up, put the tackle away. So everything that everybody thinks about doing charters as boat owners, you all know when you take your neighbor out, and he comes, you come back at the end of the day and he grabs his shit and goes to his house and he leaves you with all the work, right? So I did this video. I may do one after I start the radiation because I'll be able to tell you really how bad is a balloon up your ass? You know, how bad is it? Is it really, if, am I really fatigued? Is it really not causing any incontinence? And, you know, what's it like in the middle of doing this? When you're three weeks into getting up and driving over there, getting zapped, coming home, possibly hitching up the boat and taking off, getting up and doing it all over the same the next morning. A little bit different than going to work. You don't go to work and have somebody stick something up your butt and drop your trousers and do this and do that. And so either way, it's just one of those things. Just another little hiccup in the story of life. So uh, thanks for watching. I'm not doing any editing to this thing. I am slamming this baby right up to YouTube. I tried it the other day. I tried using my webcam. Here's my webcam that I did all kinds of live streams with, with uh, Oral Walk, and now it's not working. It powers on. But for some reason, the software or the something, I tried doing a live stream off of this camera because this camera is very quality. So now I've got to uh, figure out how to do this because I'd like to use this camera every once in a while instead of this GoPro here. So thanks for watching and I'll keep you updated. And I got been sitting around not doing much except going to doctor's visits and stuff the whole first week of this month. And now I hit basically, what is it, about week two and a half. And now, balls to the wall. I'll be all next week. I'm going to be fishing. So if we got good catches, we got something going on. If Dr. Simons, he catches a big fish or his parents, I'll get it on video for you. So I'll talk to you later. Thanks for watching.